love you out this morning. I know you're here because you love the Lord. Amen. I love you. It's good to be in the house of God. Before I get started, um, I haven't been able to discuss all of this with Sister Angela. We, she got a request for the, um, the girls' um, home that's there that... Uh, um, takes in the, the, the re, those are rehabbing. And um, I don't know a whole lot about it. They have worked with it for quite a while. And, and things from the church have helped them. Uh, but she got a request for some personal things for the ladies. They have 26 ladies there. Can you imagine? 26. Um, but anyway, they need some personal things and Sister Angela, I haven't discussed this completely with you, but um, since there's 26, we'll take 13 of them. If you ladies will take 13. That's good. That's good plan. And we'll make them each a little bag. Sounds good. And here's some items that we're going to... And then there's other things that you and I will talk about. And we'll buy it in bulk form. Something like detergents and stuff like that. We'll, we'll take care of that and um, different personal items that they need. It's not on this list, but we'll get in a bag. But I've got 13 sheets here, ladies. If any of you want one, and you will take one. Okay, we got one. We got another one. Okay, just come up here and get them. Carlene, go get them. Uh, Carlene. Ladies. Well, let's get, go get them. Let's get the ladies. You take two of them? Oh, sure. Sorry. Praise God. All right. Okay. I think you got two. You got two. Well, good. Smash them out. Yeah, do that, Carol. That's good. If you have any left, we'll uh, give them to the men. <laughs> I think they're gone, right? I would like to have them at the ladies' lunch on Saturday if it's possible. Is that is that a possibility? You can put more stuff in it. Anything beyond that, I, I'm sure the notebooks and the pens are when they go to classes. I guess that's right. Is that maybe you know that? Yeah. that we we got yeah we got toothpaste, and I'm going to order to, uh, extra like uh, toothbrushes in bulk so they can just put them um, so you don't get them a toothbrush. I'll just get toothbrushes and. They can have them and put them up and give them to whoever they need it. I'll, I'll order those in bulk. And um, the other other things like laundry detergent and stuff and other things. But yeah, anything that you think of that you think would bless them, get them whatever you want. And I will have the bags. Um, uh, put them in whatever bag you can. I have a Walmart bag or whatever you give me to uh, get them there. And I'll have the bags ready for you to put them in. And we don't have any names. It won't matter who they're, you're getting them out. Okay? Is that good? Also, tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock, you that want to come to the... Uh, um, is there a way somebody can lower this thing for me right here? Uh, Pastor, can you lower this thing? I don't know why it's this tall. But, um, get a Get it a little bit lower. That's good enough right there. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was one day. But, but tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, Sister Mary is doing her class uh, here um, at the Daniel plan. So just just keep that in mind, too. Whenever any of you want to come, you're welcome to come and uh, be that. But all right, let's look to the word of the Lord. And I thank you, ladies. and. All of you that are so willing to do that. In fact, y'all didn't even leave me one, but I'll order some stuff in book, okay? All right, okay. Father, today we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, and we ask you to be the teacher. Holy Spirit, God, lead, direct us, open our understanding, 
Lord, that we can understand what you're trying to say to us and we'll give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. We turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah 32. And while you're going there, go to Revelations chapter 3 and hold your finger there. Okay. Revelations 3. Isaiah chapter 32. The scripture that you've heard quoted here many times in reference to the natural eyes and the natural ears, but we're going to find out today that there's four components that God looks at that's important to Him and, and especially to us. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, or shall not be closed, is one translation says, shall not be closed. The eyes of them that see shall not be closed, and the ears of them that hear, King James uses the word hearken, but another translation says shall listen. See and hear. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. Four things here that God looks at in us, we have naturally in our bodies, but they are so important spiritually to us. The eyes that see, and that is about light coming in and revelation and understanding coming to us. The ears not only hear, but they listen and they understand. The heart is very important. It has to be a believing heart and a receiving heart. The tongue is important because we are able to speak. And the scripture that says, with the heart, man believes yes. unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made. The eyes and the ears work together. Because if you hear the gospel, and you don't comprehend it or hear it, then you can get a revelation for it and understand it. And if you don't understand the gospel, then you can't be, believe and be saved. Am I right? So they've got to, we've got to hear and understand. All right. And then the heart and the mouth or the tongue, because you couldn't speak if you didn't have a tongue, must be to work together. Because with the heart, man believes, and with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Why are these <clears throat> excuse me, so important? Because Isaiah prophesied a day when we would see and understand God. He spoke of the day when the rash or the hasty voice that was quick to, quick to speak and slow to hear would be changed, as James says, be quick to do what? Hear and slow to speak. So we're, that's just reversed into what the Isaiah was talking about. The heart of the rash, because from the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks. So whatever condition your heart is in, it's what's going to come out of your mouth. So these are Bible truths that we see and know to be absolutely vital in our walk with God. The heart's got to believe. The mouth has got to speak what you believe. The eyes have got to understand and see the Word of God. And the ears 
have got to be open to hear the voice of God. If those things are missing from our walk with God and they are void of understanding, then we will not grow spiritually. Right. We will not to come to the realize the full depth and the height of the riches of God and the Word of God. I, uh, Revelations chapter 3 John was writing as he was given instruction in verse 18 of chapter 3 and it says I counsel or I advise you to buy of me be Jesus speaking gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that you may be clothed that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eyesalve that you may see. Getting the vision cleared. Getting the understanding opened. And, and as Paul says in, in Ephesians, I believe it is chapter 5, if we can go there right quick. Ephesians chapter 5. Actually, I want to back up. Yeah, let's see. In, in chapter 1, and then we'll go to 5. Verse 17 of 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you unto, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. You know, when Jesus was going to ascend to heaven, the Bible says He opened their understanding that they might receive the Word of God. Open their understanding. Why had He not done that before that time? Because they were about to be in field and baptized with the Holy Spirit that would bring to their knowledge and understanding everything that he had taught them. And so he opened their understanding. Do you know what? We need to pray for that. That the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That we may know. You see, if you don't understand something, you don't know it. Right? I'm, I'm just an elementary teacher. <laughs> If you don't understand something, you don't know it. To fully comprehend something, then you know it. And then that knowledge that you have has got to be applied for you to fully enjoy the benefit of the knowledge that you've learned. Amen. Yes. Therefore, he said, get wisdom. That's the principal thing. Mm -hmm. But in all thy getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then you can apply the wisdom that you know mm -hmm. if you have fully, full understanding of what you're talking about. Why is it important that we understand that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of His calling? What is, the, what is the expectation of His calling? What is He going to do with us, for us, and in us, and through us? What is our purpose being in the church? What, what, is, what is it that we're here for? And, and, a, and a lot of us only take care of us. We make sure we get blessed. We make sure that, you know, we're touched by the Spirit of God when we come here. We make sure that we're here to receive personally, right? But what part of the body are we? And what function do we have 
in relationship to the other part of the body. Have we understood that fully? That there's a purpose for every part of the body that we have. Every part of our body is necessary. The eyes are extremely necessary. The ears are necessary. The heart is really necessary. <laughs> and the mouth is necessary. The two parts of that are the most... We have, let me word this carefully. Are the hardest <laughs> to control and deal with. The prophet said the heart is desperately wicked and who can know it? And we're talking about the spiritual heart, which incorporates both the soul and the spirit. If we're not born again, it's wicked. All right. And the mouth, James says, the tongue is set on fire of hell. So, our tongue and our heart is very important. They are not just normally converted when you get saved. Anybody know what I'm talking yeah. about? Those two things have to be worked on continually. Yeah. The eyes and the ears feed those things. And it depends on what you put in front of your eyes and what you listen to with your ears. Yeah. They control what happens in the heart and with the mouth. Yes. All right. Now that I've got that correction out of the way. <laughs> but it's important that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of, his, of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who do believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought or worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world or in this age, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is what? His body. His body. So our place in, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God, in the will of God, in the plan of God, is to simply be the body of Christ. The body. And every person is valuable and a part. Some of us have to be worked on a little bit harder than others. Some of us take a little bit longer time. But God doesn't throw any part out of the body until they choose to excise themselves from the body. Amen. That's why we need to be patient with one another. Amen. Compassionate toward one another. Amen. And if one is wounded, they're not thrown away. If you break your finger, you don't say amputate it. You bandage it up. You try to correct it. And it may even take a while to get it back fully functioned. If we see and understand this, I believe the church will grow stronger Amen. and more powerful in the relationship to God and the relationship to people. The eyes of our understanding be opened. Amen. That we may know what is the hope of His calling. Ephesians 5, beginning with verse 14. <clears throat> I 
Well, let me get 13. For all, but all things that are reproved, corrected with improvement, with correction, are made manifest by the light. When we correct the things in our life that come short of the plan and purpose of God, it's made known to God. And God blesses us for every correction that we make to please Him. So it's made known. It's not only made known to the Lord, it's made known to the rest of the body. When you have a part of your body that is not functioning right, the whole body suffers with it. And when you correct that and that's healed, the whole body knows it then, right? So we, we are a body of believers that we are Christ's body. We function according to the jurisdiction of the head. Our brain tells us things that we don't even, even have knowledge of at the moment. In other words, when I move my hand, my brain has told it to move, and I didn't have to say, brain, tell my hand to move. Right. Right? Right. right. When I get up and start to walk, I don't say, brain, get in gear here and tell my feet to move. Why? We function automatically and freely yes. and without hesitation. The body of Christ should be willing to do that. Are we that in tune with the Spirit that He doesn't have to shout at us to get us moving? Mm. Just a gentle nudge from the Holy Spirit. But you know what? Mm. We don't even need Him to nudge us. We just need to respond yes. yeah, when we worship, when we yeah. praise, mm. when we pray. When we function yes. in God like we should, yes. it should be just with joy, with peace. We just, it's just a, almost without even, we don't even think about it. We just do it. Okay. All right. So everything that's made manifest for the light, whatsoever is made manifest is light. Okay, so he says, wherefore, he said, now you know that you've been enlightened, that you don't have to make yourself do something to serve God. It's just an automatic response from the functioning of the Holy Spirit, the power that's working in you. If somebody's sick, and you know they're sick, the first thing you want to do is lay your hand on them and pray for them. It's not something you have to say, oh, God, now, give me the gift of healing. The Bible says believers would lay hands on the sick yes, yes. and then they'd, they'd be healed. So, you don't have to say, no, wait a minute, Lord, am I a believer or not? It's just something within you that has the compassion, as someone was saying, that, that you don't want them to be sick anymore. And you've got the answer. And the Word backing you up in the authority of the Word, that believers would lay hands on the sick. The eyes of them that see shall not be closed. They'll see the need and respond to it. Amen. Yes. The ear will hear the Holy Spirit prompting you even though there's not a voice. Yes. Saying, do this, do that. When we begin to function, I'm about to get excited here. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, with, with just not having to, well, let me, let me ask, you know, let me, let me talk to God and see if I need to witness to this person. If he's got that person already there and they're saying something about them, an automatic open door. That's right. That's right. 
See what I'm saying? Yes. If someone is sick and they say, you know, I've got a terrible headache and I'm just, would you let me just pray for them? Automatically. I learned my lesson. And I said, Lord, and I've told you this story. We're sitting in this tent revival and uh, I was listening to the men on the platform, the pastor of the church. And God said, he needs to be prayed for. He's got a condition in his body that needs prayer. And I looked around at all these ministers and pastors sitting there. And, and alumni said, why me, Lord? I didn't obey God, and the man died from cancer. What if I would obey God, and God had said, you know what, God lets me know. I said, God, never again. I don't care whether I'm accepted or not accepted. And when somebody says they, you know, they're sick in prayer, or they need prayer, or God prompts me to do it, whether it works or not, I'm doing it. That's right. That's right. It's not my job to make it work. It's my job to believe that God will do something. See what I'm saying? How many times have we missed it when it would have just been a simple thing to say, can I pray for you? You see what I'm saying? Okay, let me go on. But he said, wherefore, he said, awake you that are sleeping. And then he said, arise from the dead. Get off of your dead horse and get on the life one. Get busy. I called it a horse. Okay. <laughs> Christ will give you the understanding of what to do. That's where he says, Christ shall give you light. He will give you understanding, but you've got to move. The eyes of them that see shall be enlightened. They'll, they'll see. They'll comprehend what the, what the situation is right then. They'll know immediately. This is the anointing that comes on you to immediately see what needs to be done. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears that hear will listen. The eyes of them that see shall not be closed to the situation that God wants you to get involved in. And the ears will hear the voice of God. As one prophet wrote, You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Yes. Walk you in it. Mm -hmm. I tell you, God's getting ready to do something. Yes. Awide, arise, awake. Awake, awake. Get awake, get alert. You that are sleeping, arise from the dead and Christ shall give you understanding on what you're supposed to do. We, we need to get so close to God and under the anointing that we just are automatically responding to His Spirit. Yes. Why? And He says, See that you walk circumspectly. In other words, carefully. Walk carefully. Not as fools, but as wise. Not as fools, not, not someone who's confused, not someone who disregards the, the leadership of God, but one who is wise and obeys quickly the voice of the Lord. Why? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will is of the Lord is. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 
In 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, it says, The children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. We've got to have an Issachar anointing to understand the times. <clears throat> there were 200 of them, and everybody was subject unto them because they would go to them. <clears throat> What is the Lord saying now? What is the Lord saying to you? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's the Lord saying to you? Have you ever gone to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to hear you now. I want you to tell me what I need to do instead of me telling you what I need you to do. Yeah, yeah. All, most of our prayers are praying, God, I need you to do this. But do we ever take time to say, God, what do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? What can I do today? Or what do I need to do to correct anything in my life? I've told this story on me. And that's the only way I can, you know, tell. And I can't tell your story. But I did that once. And I said, Lord, where am I missing it? What can I do? To... And oh, he quickly let me know. <laughs> he said, you don't love like you're supposed to love. Well, I thought I did. I thought I was there. Said you don't love like you're supposed to love. And so I saw the boat up in the back and I said, well, how am I supposed to love? You talk to God that way? Yes. You had a conversation with me. I want to find out. If I didn't do it right, how am I supposed to do it? He said, well, you love first. He said, I love first. If you want to love like me, you've got to love a minute. Love first. And then you love because they're my creation. And then the third one, you love in spite of them. Well, the first two wasn't too hard. The third one took a little while. Because people are people. But I learned in that not to be offended not to prejudge. If a person does something wrong, as the Word says, pray for them. If you see a brother and sister that misses the mark, pray for them. That's the only thing you need to do is pray for them. Well, I've got to correct them. Uh-uh. It's not your job. You're not the parent. <laughs> you are a like-minded with the same passion and you can mess up too. If you don't believe it, just walk a few years and see if you don't miss the mark sometime. But redeem the time because the days are evil. To know and understand the times we're in. That goes beyond just you know, praying for our brothers and sisters. We are in the last days. We are in the time. It could be a hundred years, but they're still the last days. You can see this nation collapse and rise again. I mean, God's in control of the timing. We're in control of getting it right with us. Right? That's right. We're to go on and, and occupy till He comes. Yes, yes. We keep doing the same the thing that God says do. We don't hide. We don't run. We don't back down. We just keep preaching the Word. It doesn't make any difference what the laws of the land say or what they excuse and accept as being godly when it's not. Mm -hmm. We teach the Word of truth and live it no matter what. Amen. Stay on course. 
As I mentioned Sunday, they accused Paul of being an infectious disease, a pestilence. They're saying that Christians are a threat to society now because we don't believe in the things they're promoting. We don't hate anybody. In fact, we're the ones that love them. Because we don't want to see anybody stand before God and say you and hear God tell them, you are an abomination to me. You're a murderer. We don't want anybody to go to hell. We want them to believe in a God who loves them, who wants to correct and not destroy. But we've got to sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. We are the only ones that know how to redeem them. And we're not doing the redeeming. God is the only one that can redeem them, but we know how to lead them to the one that can redeem them. And the eyes have to be open to the facts. Because you can read clearly in the Word of God where it says that homosexuality is an abomination to God. A direct command. I don't care if my brother or my sister, I don't care who it is in my family, I have got to let them know that it is not right with God. They are not acceptable, and I don't care whether they're going to church, doing the choir, anything is, that is not acceptable with God. It's contrary to God's plan. We don't hate them. We actually fear for their soul. Mm-hmm. They're trying abor- to get abortion to kill the baby after it's born. They're worshiping Baal. Because Baal, one and, and, and the other gods, <coughs> they, they wanted children to be sacrificed to them. But it wasn't a god, they made a god. Right, right. Yeah. And they believed what they wanted to about this God called Baal. And the other ones. And they, they, they made it after a while their own thinking because the Bible said that the imagination was evil continually. And that's what's happening in our nation. God has turned us over to an ungodly nation. And the only thing that's keeping it afloat is you that will pray. Yes, amen. And obey God. The eyes of our understanding have got to be open. We need to know and discern the time. And if you've ever preached it straight, you've got to preach it straighter now. Yes, amen. Amen. You've got to declare righteousness amen. now. Mm-hmm. We've got to make it noised abroad now. Thank you, Jesus. Because judgment is coming. Yes. Number one, we got to be know we're right with God. And that everything has been created. Our eyes will not be dim. They will not be closed. Not only to the things that God is trying to show us about us, about the church, about the nation. We've got to get involved in praying for the nation. Uh, for so long, the church has stepped out of what we want to call politics. It's not about politics. It's about the nation that's walking away from God. Killing one another. Destroying everything that's good about even the children. And I didn't mean to say all of this. But my heart cries out. God help the church to to pray. And as Sister Linda said, the women, you know, 
The Bible teaches us to be godly mothers for the ungodly young people that are coming now that don't know anything about God. Do we love all of their ways? No. But their ways will never be changed until we show them the love of God in a different way. Yes. My nephew came up yesterday and we were doing some ancestry tracing and all of that. And, and uh, I was showing him one of my lineages of that someone had done and given and they put my name down there and they put no children. And I said, and I've had more kids than most people. <laughs> but you know what? God gave me a heart to love when he corrected me. Because <laughs> I didn't have a lot of patience with people who didn't live right. But God showed me how to love them anyway. Amen. Lord of mercy. That's all right. I hope it's all right with y'all. That's a good word. I hope this wakes us up. Yeah. And I hope that you get so distraught that you can't sleep at night when you see what's going on in this nation yeah. and the ungodliness that's being promoted. The children in one hospital, the little girls were having hysterectomies from zero up. And if that don't disgust you, then you get me to get your heart right with God. And this transgenderism that's, that's going on, that's teaching these kids in school, that they don't have to be a boy if they're a boy or a girl if they're a girl. They can be whatever they want to. If that don't disgust you and promote it, then you need to get your heart right. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's right. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall we fear? Fear God. He told Paul, he said, Paul, I'm sending you to the Gentiles and I'm not going to let them harm you. I'm going to send you to them, and I'm not but I'm going to harm you. He told the prophet, set your face like a flint. Don't look to the right hand, to the left. And don't be afraid of their faces. Shout it from the housetop. Yes. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, when Samson messed up and told his secret of his strength, the word that Delilah got was entice him. Tell him things he wants to hear. Pull him in, you know, and make him think he's the greatest thing that ever was. Tell him things that they want to hear. Entice him. Seduce him. And I believe the Bible says, be not deceived. And that's the same word. We're enticed if we listen. 
to a lot of things that's going on. I'm just mentioning these things to get your faith working. Ezekiel was sent by God down to a valley of dry bones. And he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Wise answer. Wise man. He didn't dare say, I don't know. He didn't say, there's no life there. He didn't argue with God. He just said, God, you know. God, you know. He didn't have a clue whether they could do it or not. When we get to the point that the only thing we know is God, as Paul said, I know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In other words, that's our full source of strength, of character. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. David said, I know God gave me favor because He made me stronger than my enemies. When you understand that, when your eyes get open and your ears listen and you hear that I'm stronger than my enemy. We sing this song, Greater is He that is in me. But do we really believe it? Do you know that God will enlighten you and you can believe and know for a fact that you're stronger than your enemy. Why am I stronger than my enemy? Because God lives in me and He defeated Satan. Yes. So if He defeated Satan and we're in Him, Satan is already defeated. The eyes, I keep saying this, the eyes that see shall not be closed to the truth of God's Word. When they came upon me, they wanted to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell, not me. David said, Though a host should rise in camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. I mean, David said, God's bigger than an army. Because he's the captain of the Lord of hosts. And as Jesus said, you're not taking my life. I'm laying it down. Because I could just call legions of angels and take care of you. Are we that confident in God? Do we have our eyes open and our ears hearing that God he says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world? People don't do things and, and be strong in the Lord because they fear man. More than God. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. The throne room in heaven is always open. It's a sanctuary. It's a place of refuge. It's a place of rest. It's a place where you meet God. It's a place where you come out empowered with God. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, a foundation that cannot be destroyed. And now my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in His tabernacle sacrifices of what? Of joy. I will sing. Yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said, Lord, thy face will I seek. Do you hear the voice of the Lord saying, Seek my face? How many times have we sought his hand of provision and not his face that teaches us knowledge and understanding? 
Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So, if you're alone, forsaken by everybody that you know, can you make it? Yes. If you know God is your refuge, you'll make it. Yes. Amen. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathed out cruelty. We're there, folks. It's subtle. It's suggestive now. But our enemies don't like us. But what can we say? Lord, don't deliver me over to the will of my enemy. They don't like us. But do what? I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then he said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Is God your strength and your refuge? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me, he guides me, he directs me. He causes my face to shine. He causes my, my, me to be anointed with fresh oil. He makes a, a, prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Can you believe, can you understand that God says, I'm going to give you all these good things and you're going to sit down and your enemies are going to watch what I do to bless you. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord.